Numbers chapter 13. And I read from verse 26. If you are there, shout hallelujah. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Piran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely, everybody says surely. surely. Everybody says surely. surely. And surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great and moreover we saw the children of Anak there the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan 30 and Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it but the man that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw there in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. May the Lord bless the Lord. So 2018 is the year of unprecedented overflow for us. It means that God is going to bring us tremendous abundance. A great overflow. And we have to be ready to receive. You have to prepare your mind a certain way. You have to order your life a certain way to receive that which God is bringing. If not, the overflow will come. But it may pass you by. Because you are not ready mentally. You have not prepared yourself. If you want to receive the overflow, there is a way you must conduct yourself. There is a way you must conduct your life. There is a way you must operate. If you operate the same way as you have been that brought you failures, the end result is going to be the same. But if you change your methods and you decide to live according to the word of the Lord and to honor God Almighty in your personal life, then you will experience the overflow. I'm happy to tell you even this morning that already the testimonies are all over the place. Powerful things are happening in the lives of people. And you look at them and you realize that it is a result of how they have lived their lives. So the word of God is coming to pass in their lives. This morning, I'm going to talk to you briefly about the life of the children of Israel in the wilderness. The Bible says clearly, in their journeys into the promised land, as we just read, Moses took out 12 spies and he sent them out to go and investigate and check out the land or the promised land where they were going and come back and tell everybody what they saw. And that is where this passage starts. So the Bible says in verse 27, they went, they checked the land out, they examined the place and they came back. They came back. Now, <laughs> When they came back, the Bible says, they told them and said, we come unto, we came unto the land without thou sentest us, verse 27. And surely, everybody says surely. surely. Everybody says surely. surely. They, they said surely, 
It floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. God had told his children, I am taking you into a land. I am moving you out of slavery. I am moving you out of bondage. And I am taking you into a land that flows with milk and with honey. Hallelujah. That is what he told his people. He made them that promise and said, that is where I am taking you. I am not taking you to, into some ordinary place. It's a wonderful place. Hallelujah. Can you believe that as a matter of fact, these human beings were fighting this. They actually, they fought this agenda. Being moved from bondage, from slavery, in Egypt, into Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they will rise up and they will say, you know what, this is useless. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's make ourselves a new leader. Let's go back to Egypt. And you ask yourself, how could this be? How can God come to us as a people and offer us such hope? Offer us such freedom? Offer us such liberty? And yet, we sit back and say, you know what? I like where I am. How can that be? Meanwhile, where you are is infested with demonic activity. The wickedness of the enemy is abundant all around you. God stands in our midst and he promises us blessings. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And guess what he says? I will give you rest. Come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And man says, no, I like my burdens. I like my heavy load. And we begin to cry because we are carrying burdens and we are carrying heavy loads. And we go to our psychologists and our professionals and they cannot help us. Who do you blame for this? You can't blame anybody. You blame yourself. Because Jehovah himself through an invitation to us. And he says, come to me, that's all. And man says, no, I will not come. I prefer to carry my burdens. I prefer to carry my heavy load. And that is why life has become so miserable. They told us that if you're able to count a few millions in your bank account, you should be happy. But happiness does not come that way. Yeah, you may be happy today because you bought a brand new car and it smells great. But give me three months. All that nice little smell disappears. It's not exciting at all. So then what do you do? You go back and you buy another one. And the experience is still the same. And it gets to a point, you get tired. And you say, you know what? This thing is not satisfying me like I thought. Let me try something else. And the same results. The reason is this. You may be driving a fanciful car, but you are still carrying your burdens and your heavy load. And until Jesus Christ takes that burden and the heavy load off of your life, you will never enjoy what you have. You can go to Star Furniture and buy the most fanciful bed and take it home. And I saw an advert where there is this bed that you have to use remote control to control. So when the husband gets mad at the wife, hallelujah, he will lift up his fat away. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. And the wife's always left in the valley. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. And then when the wife gets mad, hallelujah, he still demands remote control. Glory to God. And he will, she will lift hers up all the way and leave the man so right there behind, and down on the floor. And then when one of them refuses to apologize, you know what they do? They all take the remote control and throw it away. Glory to God. We are on the same level any day, any time. I mean, I said that must be nice, but that, that, that is no guarantee for sleep. That is absolutely no guarantee 
for sleep because you are laying on this nice bed, yet you are carrying the burdens and you are heavy. Yet, there is somebody who doesn't have any of this nice stuff. And it doesn't matter. On the floor, hard concrete. And because they have the peace of God in them, they get on their knees. They fall asleep on their knees before they even touch the floor. And the sunlight is not strong enough to wake them up. Somebody has to come and wake them up. How do you sleep under such circumstances? Because I carry the glory and the grace of God upon my heart. The Bible says that Daniel was thrown in the evening in a den of lions. There were lions everywhere. Guess what he did? He went to sleep. And the king that was sitting in this palace couldn't sleep. How do you explain that? That's why he said, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he has offered us hope. He has offered us that which our strength cannot offer us. Our intelligence, our abilities, our ingenuity lack the ability to provide us. That is what Jesus has given us for free. And just like the children of Israel, you see him. We will prefer our own way to the ways of God. We want to do it our way. This is how I want to live my life. And nobody has the right to tell me to change it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Nobody does. Go on. Enjoy what you have. If it's good for you, do. But I can only encourage you that there's a better way and there's a better life. That there are some things in this life you don't have an answer to. It doesn't matter who you are. Accept the Lord. Accept the Lord. Accept the Lord intervenes. You will do everything and you will still fail. Stand back and say, you know what? I tried everything. I tried everything. Sometimes you meet some parents. They're wonderful people. And you tell them, I tried everything for my kids. But strangely, they turned up wrong. You went to God wrong. You went wrong when you refused to heed to the counsel and the call of Jesus Christ. When he said, Come unto me, all you that labor, and I have a lady, and I'll give you rest. He said, No, I know better. If you know better, give yourself rest. Give yourself rest. Give yourself peace. Make yourself go to sleep at night. Do it. There are some things it is not in the hands of God. Amen. God did not leave it in the hands of man. He left it in the hands of the creator of man. And a man must go to his creator to receive that which the creator has for them. Until you go to Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter who you are. This that I'm talking about, you will never get it. That is how come a man is able to stand in bondage and say, I prefer this bondage to the promise that God has given me. May that not be. May that not be our story. May that not be our story. There is a wind blowing in this place. Supernatural wind of the presence of the glory of God. God is visiting us this morning. God is touching us this morning. God is comforting us this morning. God is strengthening us this morning. God is bringing us unique rest this morning. The blessings of God is filling our lives in this place this morning. Let's order our steps to be able to receive it. Order your life to be able to receive it. If not, like the children of Israel, instead of getting the blessing, we incur the wrath of God. May that not be our portion. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty prayer. So they went and they searched the land and they said, 
Surely it floweth with milk and honey. Now, look at me for a second. Everybody says, surely. surely. For them to say, surely, tells me that actually they didn't believe that they would find milk and honey in the place. It was so lofty an idea and a promise in their head. This is unachievable. But because Moses, you have sent us, we have to go. But truthfully speaking, this journey that I'm going on, I don't expect to see milk and honey. Come on, somebody say, that's unbelief. That's unbelief. When God will quicken you and lead you in a certain path, go expect it. Amen. Don't go wondering. Go expect it. When God tells you, do A, B, C, D, follow the voice of God. Go expect it. Don't go wondering. Hallelujah. Oh yes, the moment you begin to wonder, you are walking in unbelief. That means you are debating the voice of God and the counsel of the Holy Ghost. But the moment you hear his voice clearly, hey, praise you, don't wonder, just go believe it. So they went in there, this man, you know, I don't think we can see any milk and honey in this place. And then all of a sudden, they saw milk and honey. Wow. I didn't think this was possible. Hmm. Checked it out, examined it, verified it, convinced themselves that this is actually true. And because they started with unbelief, one way or the other, they must end with unbelief. This is a revelation, child of God. This is a revelation for you. Everything that you do, make sure you approach it with faith and a pure heart. Because you see, even if God brings the miracle to pass, the very thing that, that, that confronted you and made you afraid and, and, and created unbelief in you, even when you get it, the devil will still bring it back and torment you with that unbelief. It's a revelation. Go and think about it. That is how come after people have become successful, glory be to God forever, still you talk to them and they are filled with unbelief. And I say, how can you be, how can you be so fearful when, when God has done all these things in your life? Because they were fearful from the beginning. So when they got a blessing and miracle, that fear still came back to torment them. So even after they saw all that, you know what they were looking for? They were looking for that which lines up with their fear and their unbelief. And then, they saw giants in the place. Oh, wow. Whew. There are giants here. There are giants in this place. Oh man, if there are giants in this place, man, this is a scary place. I saw them looking around here, but no, I'm scared of this place. Say, come on, guys, let's hurry up, let's go back. So, in spite of the fact that they saw what God told them, they came and they added their own stanza, second stanza to the testimony. And the second standard was that there are giants in the land. Come on, look at me from my brothers and my sisters. Didn't God know that there were giants in the land? Didn't God know that there were giants in the land? Yes. How come he did not talk about giants, but he spoke about milk and honey? If God has not spoken about it, don't make a theory out of it. If God did not add that to your assignment, don't go and include it. Whatever God took, that's what you take. Hallelujah. God did not talk to me about giants, so I, whether giants are there or not there, I, that's not my problem. What he told me was that the land flows with milk and honey, and I saw it, and I'm happy. So they came back, and already they have seen something that confirmed their apprehension from the beginning. That's how human beings we are. And that is why even people sit in church and they are daily to because they have mixed the word of God up with their own feelings. Well, the Bible says it, but this is what I think. Keep thinking what you think. You will be what you are. You will never change and you will never see the glory of God. For as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Why do we go to church? We go to church to hear the word of God so that we can change the way we think. That is why we go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. You go there and you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Glory to God. Say, Lord, speak to me today. 
and God will speak to you and tell you that which you've never known. Amen. And that is what is going to change your life. Amen. Because your life that you have today is a result of that which you've already known. And, it, and are you happy where you are? You need to learn new stuff. So you can be better than what you are. Amen. That man knows that. We will remain the same. So they came and they were happy to tell the people that, yes, we saw what God spoke about. But we also saw something else. And everyone was like, what did you see? Let's see what the word says. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Now, when God was sending them over there, he told them that the land that I'm giving to you, it's actually belong to other people. Their, their lands belong to the Amorites which involve the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the, all, everybody, all of them put together. But I am giving their land to you because they sinned against me. And he said that the, the sins of the Amorites are not full. That is why he is disposing them to give their land to them. Hallelujah. So already, it is not new. They all, everybody knows they are there. God knows they are there. He, he told us about it already. And, and so for me to go over, look at it, and come back and say, oh yeah, it's there. Doesn't make sense. He said, I don't want to go and I'm trying to find an excuse. Or maybe say something is wrong with me. So they come back and said, the people that dwell in the land, they are strong. Come on, somebody say they are strong. They are strong. Come on, somebody say they are strong. They are strong. I mean, what do you expect? What, what do you expect? When you're going into a land that is flowing with milk and honey, I, you think you're the first person to ever desire milk and honey? No! Somebody else wants it too! And before you get over there, somebody must have been there already. And since they got over there, they realize milk and honey is good. Say, listen, I gotta protect myself. If not, somebody's gonna come and take it from me. Year of unprecedented overflow. The thing that God is going to get you into, hallelujah, prepare yourself. They are not going to be easy stuff. There are some things you have to fight for them because the devil wants it. Oh, the Bible says war to them that are at ease in time. You want to break through, but you don't want to work for it. You don't want to fight for it. No, 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 you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready to fight. You've got to be ready to stand. You've got to be ready to possess your possessions. Hallelujah. Don't sit back and allow the devil to just do whatever you want. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Get out there and say, listen, man, this is my, and I'm going to take it. Why should you do a business deal and by the, I mean, just, just, just at the last point to get your breakthrough, now somebody comes in and snatches it from you and says, no, 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 you go get it, but you don't go enjoy it. You're going to bring it back to me. You've got to be strong. If not, the enemy will steal your blessings. They were meant for you, but because you refused to stand, the devil stole it. Don't allow your unbelief to cause you to run away in the face of your trials and your adversity and just take off. There are some Christians who quit everything. If you don't like it, you quit. If it doesn't look like what you thought, you quit. You quit everything, everything. What you're quitting is the normal way of life. Until there are guarantees, you never take a step. That's why your life is where it is. What you want, somebody also wants it. And because of that, you've got to stand and fight. Don't look at your enemy and tell yourself, my enemy is strong. What kind of story is that? What kind of story is that? You are going to fight somebody and you are standing back and say, oh wow, look at his muscles. Look at how big they are. My God, I bet this guy lifts 600 pounds every morning. He benches 1,000 pounds. And me, I could only lift up 150. Man, this is great. And you are standing back in your mind, the strength of your enemy. 
and you expect to win the battle, you've already lost. Because when he's beating, you are busy admiring his forces and he'll be beating you up. They knock you there and you're busy talking about how beautiful the muscles are. Oh, no, 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 no. That doesn't look like somebody. So, somebody who wants to win anything. <laughs> somebody, that looks like somebody who wants to be beaten. If you want to win, it doesn't matter how big your enemy is. Mentally, reduce them. And mentally, magnify yourself. There are some times you have to talk about your strengths. There are times, yes, pump yourself up. Talk about your strength. There are some situations when you get in, don't go and talk about how frail, how humble, how weak you are. Don't talk about any of that. Talk about how intelligent you are. Talk about how smart you are. Talk about all. I mean, even if you don't have it, imagine it. Imagine it. Imagine yourself in it. Imagine it. That is how you know how weak your enemy is. If you've never imagined how strong you are, you can never imagine how weak your enemy is. So you don't go and come back and say, the enemy, my enemy is strong. What kind of story is that? You go to school, you go and meet other students in the place, and you know what they tell you. Hey, what courses are you trying to take? So, oh, I'm taking biochemistry, and I'll be taking this thing. Biochemistry, oh man, that stuff is hard. That's how they discouraged that case. Oh man, that stuff is hard, man. That stuff. I knew a guy that did it, man. He went crazy. <laughs> before, before he finished school, he was on medication. And I know the professor that runs that department. That man, oh man, he's a crazy guy. And it's hard. So the kid begins to think about, oh wow, this, this stuff is hard. So then what do you do? But for me, I'm steady leisure. <laughs> my, 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 my field of study is leisure and entertainment. <laughs> so there's something called, yes. It's a field of study. And when we go to class, they take us to the park <laughs> to go and listen to how the birds you know, fly around and they're chirping and all that kind of stuff and we document it so that we can teach people how to relax and to have a leisure time. <laughs> it is fun. It is really fun. So then your kid writes up from school, Mommy, Daddy, <laughs> I have changed my major. Why do you change your major? Because biochemistry is hard, but I'm studying leisure and entertainment. That is what happens. But you cannot look at your enemy and tell yourself, my enemy is strong. Don't make that mistake. Always see your enemy whipped before the After you deal with them, if they become strong again, that's their problem. But as far as you are concerned, you need your victory. And you must announce your strength. You must announce your abilities. You must announce all the great things that God has done in your life. Announce it. Tell yourself. Rehearse it and announce it. Tell everybody. Many of us, we don't even know our strengths because we are so used to this church thing, you know, trying to be humble meanwhile we are sinners. We are so sinful, it's not even fun yet, we're trying to be so humble. Please, you know, I'm a humble child of God. Meanwhile, you are so sinful. <laughs> Please, be yourself. Listen. Even if the, the answer that they are requiring of you, you don't know the answer. What you are about to say is wrong. Say it with boldness. <laughs> say your answer with boldness. They will say, yeah, they got the answer wrong, but they were bold about it. So maybe if we teach him the right answer, he'll be bold about it. So, you know, that's what we want. I like your confidence. Oh, I'm a humble child of God, a member of the wedding last year. I memorized my Bible passage every day. And you know, last year, I read the whole Bible inside our great times. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so you can trust me. I'm a very humble Christian. So thank God for your humility. It doesn't belong here. Take it somewhere else. 
We need somebody who is confident in their God. Who will not tell me the Bible they read, but who will leave the Bible they read. That I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you know what? I came to be a blessing to this place. Hallelujah. Oh, you're going to business with you. Hallelujah. And I will help you to get it done. This is why oh, we've never seen such enthusiasm before. You are hired. That is how you think about it. So for them to go and come back and stand before the man of God and the entire nation and tell them that the people in the land are strong. God says, wrong answer. May that not be your story. Amen. The Bible says so God was grieved with them and he killed them. He was mad at them and he killed them. He killed them because they brought the wrong report. So I saw the giants. <coughs> I didn't talk about giants. So how dare you walk into my house and talk about giants and discourage my people and make them fearful. And they refuse to embrace that which I have come for them. Child of God, listen. Be that Christian who encourages people. Amen. Wherever you go, you motivate people. Amen. You strengthen them. You speak good things about them. Amen. You inspire them. Amen. That's what the world needs. Amen. That is what the world needs. We need people that will inspire us, that will encourage us, that will strengthen us, that will urge us on and tell us that it is possible. We can do it in His name. We need that. Take what we have. This is what we have. Let's not magnify the strengths of our enemies. Hallelujah. Let's let's probably amen, diminish their value in our eyes mentally and fight them and win the battle because God has already gone ahead of us. That's why God was angry. So you come in here talking about what you don't have. Have you forgotten about me? You talk about how your life bill has increased. Have you forgotten about me? You talk about, oh, pastor, I can never buy a house because I can't afford a mortgage. Have you forgotten about God? Pastor, but if I buy a brand new car, they say, you know, I mean, these days I only buy insurance liability because my car is junky. But if I go and buy a brand new car, they call full coverage and I, I, I can't afford that. Have you forgotten about God? He's the one that enables us. The Bible says our sufficiency is of Him. It has nothing to do with us. He's waiting for somebody who will rise up in faith and say, Lord, I believe you all the way. The modern Christian talks the faith talk. But never leaves it. May that not be our story. Amen. God has gone ahead of us. Amen. This morning, God has gone ahead of you. Amen. Give me a mic. And that is why I can say without a shadow of a doubt. You will win. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody say, I will win. Somebody say, I will win. Listen, this is prophetic. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, it doesn't matter what I'm dealing with right now. It doesn't matter where I am right now. It doesn't matter what I don't have right now. I know for a fact that I will win. It's a be one with me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We possess the land of the giants. Amen. And that is where we belong. Hallelujah. We belong in the land of the giants. I told you this before, and I think it's worth repeating. You don't want the land of, 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 of dwarfs and midgets. Because everything is small. In the land of the giants, everything is oversized. That's what I like about Texas. Everything is big in Texas. Hallelujah. You see, that is prophecy by Esau. That is prophecy by Esau. We are prophesying, hallelujah, about our state that everything is big in Texas. If you are not ready for big things, don't come to Texas. Glory to God. Go somewhere else. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. You want to be in the land of the giants? That's exactly where you want to be. Because everything is me. Everything is me. Everything is large. Even the grapes, they are like oranges. Huge. Glory to God. The bananas, man, they are like plantains. Huge. Glory to God forever. 
Amen. Everything is vain. That's what the Lord, and that's where you need to be. May the Lord enlarge your life. Amen. May the Lord expand your life. May your bank account expand. Amen. May your pocket expand. Amen. May your miracles be big and huge for you. And you'll be able to bless others also. Lift up your hands this morning. My Father, 2018 is our year of unprecedented overflow. We are moving into greater heights, greater dimensions. We are ready for the unprecedented overflow of that blessings. Our lives, O oh God Almighty, are yielded unto thee. And we say, Holy Ghost, have your way in us. As we have lifted up our hands, O oh God, is our act of surrender. We say, pour forth your blessings. Pour forth your blessings. Overwhelm us. Our beginning may be small, but our latter ends are greatly increased. We believe you, O oh God. We believe you. For the word of God tells us that you shall do great things in our lives this year. Mighty Father, manifest yourself. Manifest yourself as you have done in times past. Do it again. Bless your children. Lift them up. Instruct their lives, O oh God Almighty, to capture the blessings of the Lord. Is there anything too difficult for you? This morning, bring up on us. Yes, Lord. Bring up on us, my Lord. The testimony has started, O oh God Almighty, and we believe you that this is just the beginning. But there are greater ones on our head. Greater blessings, greater glory, greater miracles. I worship you. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.